So I spent 25 years making a zoo in Planet Zoo, but there's a catch. This is only the first of the four videos for this zoo. Each one is going to be 25 years building up this zoo, all leading to the point of having a 100 year zoo. So let's get into it. When I opened this zoo, I first went about moving the starting electricity points further away from each other to spread out the electricity. Also, thank you to the person who commented this in my last video. I genuinely had no clue you could do that. But after I had that set up, I made a path to what will be the first shopping area. Also, a big difference from this zoo compared to ones I've previously done is that I actually have a planned map for this one. I normally just fly by the seat of my pants, but I figured if I was going to spend a hundred years making this zoo, I was going to need a more comprehensive plan. However, I'm using the planned layout of the zoo as more of a loose guideline, rather than a hard set of rules so that I can still make some on-the-fly decisions as need be. And after I had the shop area worked up, I needed to set up my first staff area. And to do that, I mapped out the first habitat by sinking the terrain so that I had a guideline for the paths. And then I threw all the staff buildings down. I also remembered to connect the paths this time. And with all the basics set up, I finally started working on the first habitat, which is going to be for the American bison. I added their water area, had the bison put in, and then made the barrier out of wood in the back and glass at the front. Added a handful of trees and then made them a shelter before messing around with the barrier a bit more because I really wasn't liking how the glass was looking. I added their enrichment and then threw rocks along the back of the habitat and sunk some bushes into them to look like moss. I added more rocks and other greenery around the habitat, but American bison have a really low coverage, so I didn't get far before exceeding it. So I worked on their terrain and added bushes around the habitat edge, along with other decorations around both the habitat and the shop area. And then I went back to the bison habitat to add more rocks because I thought it was looking rather plain. It's also here that I decided to ignore the coverage limit and just have fun with it. I added plants into the rocks along the barrier, and I even threw some broken branches around, before adding ivy along the edge of the viewing areas because I thought it looked cool. And after adding more rocks around, this habitat was finished. And this is where I decided to deviate from my original plans just a little bit by adding an exhibit at the starting area. I decided to do this because I wasn't making money nearly as fast as I wanted to be, and exhibit animals are always a good way to boost the money-making process. So I added these fun-looking poison frogs to my zoo, gave them some donation bins and an education speaker, and after about three years, my financial situation was looking a lot better, and I was ready to add the next habitat, which was going to be the tapirs. I sunk an area, threw up null barriers, and had them placed in the soon-to-be habitat. And knowing I was going to be covering up most of the barrier anyway, I settled for using the chain link fencing before surrounding it with an elevated path along one side and what was supposed to be staff path on the other, but I mistook this red brick path for the staff path I meant to use and I didn't notice it for quite some time. But wrong path aside, I added one of the new viewing dome entrance thingies to the barrier and added two viewing domes into the habitat. And then I shaped the water around the viewing domes and added the enrichment items. I made them two shelters, which were really just two floating slabs of rock that I added trees under to give the illusion that they weren't just floating there. But honestly, making custom shelters is just one of my weak points, so I wing it like every time. And sometimes it looks decent, but other times I just cover the mess with trees and bushes and hope no one notices. I added some trees around and then put an unnecessary amount of plants into and around the water. I also went about covering the underside of the elevated path with some bushes. And after that was covered, I added bushes anywhere that I thought was looking rather plain. I finished off the plants with some leaf piles along the edge of bushes, and then it was time for the part that wraps everything together. Rocks. So many rocks. Rocks around any edge not covered with plants, rocks along the edge of the fencing, and rocks along the water. And after adding education speakers and donation bins, this habitat was finished. And it's worth mentioning that the most time will pass in between habitat building while I'm letting the game run to collect money and to see if the zoo is functioning properly, seeing as it's rather difficult to let the game run and build stuff. But with that being said, I didn't wait long before jumping into the next habitat, which was going to be for the grizzly bears. 
I started with extending the path from the tapir habitat to where I wanted the grizzly bear habitat to be. And much like the other ones, I sunk the ground to map out the location before adding knoll barriers and adding the grizzly bears. I already had an idea of what I wanted to do with this habitat, so I lined the back with rocks before going in with different shades of rocks to add some variation in color. And I landed on using a concrete barrier along the front of the habitat where I didn't add rocks. I added some water, which I then made a waterfall above before sprinkling some trees around to get an idea of the layout I wanted, and then sinking bushes into the rocks to give a fun look to the background. And after that, I pulled out some bushes and flowers to decorate the middle of the habitat along with the edges. I added tall bushes along the barrier under the raised path. And I really liked these bushes, so I also sunk them into the rocks to add some depth and to cover up the waterfall section a little bit. And then it was time to work on the terrain. And what I've been doing here recently is adding long grass in areas I don't think the animals would wear down, and short grass in somewhat traveled areas, and soil in the most traveled areas. And at this point I realized that I hadn't added any shelters yet, so I pulled out the same stone I used for the tapirs, added stone supports on the bottom, and blended it in with the rock wall a little bit. After which I gave them bedding, added their feeders, and gave them their enrichment items including this neat rock climbing thing that I added to the corner. And then it was rock time. I added some around the climbing structure along the edge and in the water. And after watching this bear scratch his back, which was very cute, I added the education speakers and donation bins. And after the grizzly bear habitat, I let the game run until year 10. And here's a recap of what happened in that time. My bison started maturing. I got an inspector report and everything was looking real good. Except for the fact that all my guests were apparently very stupid. The tapirs had a baby at some point. Janet the grizzly bear learned how to tap dance. Janet also had babies. Let's hope they are also tap dancing prodigies. The tapir baby matured, so I put her in a box and sold her for profit. And by year 10, I had more than enough money to start building a house. A reptile house, to be specific. And I won't lie, I had no idea what I was doing. Well, that's kind of a lie. I had the basic concept in my head of how this was going to be put together, but I've never tried making something like this in Planet Zoo before, so it was a lot of throwing stuff together and making it work. I started with making the basic foundation, along with setting up the shopping area that is going to sit just outside the reptile house. But that's a completely different work zone in my plan, so I don't end up setting that up quite yet. I do, however, set up a souvenir shop and an information center before adding all the exhibits I wanted, 10 in total. And before I added the walls, I put in the exhibit animals I could currently get my hands on. And for simplicity's sake, I'm just going to put a list on screen for you. I added donation bins and education boards before adding walls and a roof, both of which I'm probably not going to show much of the process for, mainly because I had no clue what I was doing, but I think it turned out somewhat decent in the end. Last minute, I added this fun sky roof bit that I had a tree coming out of that I really liked the look of. And I even added fencing along the top to pull it together more. And that's pretty much where I left this building for now. It's not finished. I definitely have some more ideas as to what I want to add to it. But at this point, I had worked on it for so long, I figured I would move on for now and come back to it another time. I moved along to working on another habitat, and we're playing with big cats for this one. I lowered the train for what is going to be the Bengal tiger habitat, but before I could get very far, I needed to visit my cheetah zoo because I didn't have the conservation credits I needed to buy the tigers. That didn't take long though, and in no time I had a set of Bengal tigers added to the habitat. I set up a wood barrier before adding water to the habitat, and then I covered the wooden barrier with rocks and added a viewing dome to the side, which I also covered with rocks, and then I covered those rocks with bamboo. But messy barrier set up aside, I started adding the greenery to the habitat, focusing first around the water to get the general layout of that down. I also made the shelter part and integrated that into the greenery because I like how that's been working for me so far. I added some smaller, more colorful plants around in clusters to finish off the greenery. And some parts of the habitat were still really bare at this point, so I went in with some rocks to fill those areas out. After which I added their enrichment items, set up education speakers, and placed down donation bins. This is also where I finally noticed that the staff path I put down earlier wasn't a staff path, and fixed it after like seven years. Also, all the guests were crowding this one area that was clearly blocked by rocks and plants, and then complaining that they couldn't get a good view. 
But grouchy guests aside, I didn't wait long before jumping into the next habitat, which was going to be a combined habitat for the greater flamingo and the Indian peafowl. So I made a large rectangular hedge barrier with a zagging path going from one end to the other before adding the second staff area to the zoo and having them throw in a bunch of flamingos and peafowl. The first thing I did was add the water, seeing as flamingos like to swim, and I wanted to make sure I had that need met before anything else. I also wanted to add the heart shelters before too much else, but for the life of me, I couldn't settle on a design I was happy with. So I moved it to the side for now and went about adding the enrichment items. I threw down the donation bins and education speakers because people were already entering the habitat, so I figured I'd do that now instead of saving it for the end. And I changed the path to something more suitable for a walkthrough habitat. And finally made my way back to the hard shelter, where I actually managed to make something actually rather nice looking in my opinion. And with all those needs met, I was finally ready to pull out the foliage. I started with adding trees to fill out large sections of area that I wanted to be covered. I added some blue lotus plants to the water before working on the terrain. And then to tie it all together, I pulled out the rocks, placing most of them in front of and behind the watering area. And after scattering more small plants around, that was a wrap for the greater flamingo and Indian peafowl habitat. I finished this habitat close to the end of year 14, and my plan was to let it run until year 20, to both build up money and to make sure that my zoo was functioning properly and that there weren't any major issues I needed to fix. Everything was running somewhat smoothly. The flamingos were a little stressed, but I was expecting that. And they seemed to be fixing the issue themselves by running to the shelter, so I wasn't worried about it and left it for now. Some of the peafowls were starting to have babies, and one of them had an albino baby, which I thought was very neat. I also remembered at this point that there is a research mechanic in this game, so I got that going. And I ended up having to add one-way glass barriers to the front of the water areas because the flamingos were getting stressed out while swimming. And at first I only did it to one, but I did eventually add another barrier to the other watering area. I also added another shelter to the habitat so that they had a closer place to run to if they were stressed. There was also an issue where some of them would still be hungry even after just being fed. And I honestly couldn't figure out a fix to the issue other than deleting some of the food enrichment I had down and adding more normal feeding trays. And that kind of worked, but I was still having to send some of them to quarantine every so often so they wouldn't starve. I think that might just be something that happens when you have so many animals in one habitat. But eventually your 20 rolled around, and for the most part, the bigger issues within the zoo were sorted out. And with all that handled, I was ready to make a habitat for the Chinese pangolins. To start this habitat, I used the soil terrain to mark out a small circle. I used a wooden barrier for the back of the habitat and a chain link barrier for the front half of the habitat. I then connected the habitat to the main path along with the staff path in the back. I started with giving them a very shallow water area before setting up all the enrichment items towards the front of the habitat and then making them a shelter of terracotta, which I also made at the front of the habitat. And I left everything at the front so that I could fill the back of the habitat with trees, bushes, and other foliage. Because the penguins are so tiny, I didn't want to cover up any of the front section. By the way, I found these really big and fluffy bushes, and they're probably my new favorite thing in this game. Second to rocks, of course, but they were really fun to add to this habitat. And while I said I didn't want to cover the front of the habitat with any vegetation, rocks are fair game. So I fixed the terrain to their liking, which consisted mostly of soil before pulling out my rocks. I added rocks along the water and the barrier edge before pulling out some green bits to add something a little extra to the rocks. And finishing off the habitat by adding plants to the water and setting up education speakers and donation bins around the habitat. But the guests weren't really making their way over to the new habitat, so I added some vending machines around for incentive. And that seemed to work because they were slowly making their way over. Well, some of them were making it as far as getting their food and drinks and then turning right back around, but that's fine. And I know I said this habitat was done, but as a final thought, I did attach a viewing dome thing because I thought the habitat needed it. But that's actually it for this habitat. I didn't add more after that. I spent some time in between this habitat and the next, adding benches, trash cans, and another set of bathrooms. And this set of bathrooms isn't technically on my layout of the zoo, but the guests were complaining about needing the restroom, so I went ahead and gave them one. But after all that was handled, I hopped into making the last habitat for this video, the African Buffalo.
which is going to sit in between the peafowl slash flamingo habitat and the Chinese pangolin habitat. I sunk the train and threw up a wooden barrier with thick glass in the front. And then I tried making the water area because African buffalo enjoy water. And I wanted to have that down first so I could shape the rest of the habitat around it with the viewing areas in mind. But I was really struggling to make it look nice. So I switched focus to make everything more accessible through the staff paths and having them bring the African buffalo to the habitat. And with them in there for size reference, I was able to get a body of water that I was actually happy with. I laid a couple of trees around and then added rocks around the back of the water. And I briefly debated removing the barrier from behind the rocks before ultimately deciding that it looked better with the barrier there. I finished with adding the rocks and then decorated the water before giving them bedding underneath the shade of some trees and adding their enrichment items. I also changed the thick glass to one-way glass because the buffalo were getting stressed. But then I had to reload the game because I don't think it registered that I had changed the barrier to one-way glass because the buffalo just kept getting stressed. But they were fine after I reloaded the game. Also, I took a brief break from making this habitat because a bunch of peafowl were maturing. And I don't think I've mentioned it yet, but when I was recording this, there was an event going on where every other animal you released would either get a free animal or a set of clothes for your avatar. And I got so many free gold star animals from this event. But free stuff aside, I went back to making the buffalo habitat and started by adding the background greenery. Starting with spreading this grass around the back of the habitat and where I added bedding. And then I threw flowers and these really big bushes into the mix. Along with some smaller bushes that I also sunk into the rocks. Speaking of rocks, I added another small cluster in front of the water and a long patch of rocks in front of the viewing glass added the education speakers and the donation bins, and this habitat was a wrap. But don't worry, there are still four more years to go, so this video isn't over yet. I was still having an issue with litter gathering along the path, despite having added a lot more bins. So I hired seven more caretakers, assigned two of them to work zone two and the rest to work zone one. And with them hired and hopefully handling the litter situation, I added decorations around each habitat. Starting with the peafowl slash flamingo habitat, I found these really cute flamingo statues. And then I added two peafowl statues next to them at both the entrance and the exit of the habitat. And unfortunately there weren't any African buffalo decorations, so they didn't get anything fun for their habitat. But there were these statues of the Chinese pangolin that made him look like he was politely asking for your attention. So I scattered a couple of them around the pangolin habitat and then I moved on to the grizzly bear. And there weren't technically any grizzly bear decorations specifically, but I did make this really stupid and funny looking bear holding a bear face with an arrow pointing to the bears. And I just really like how goofy it looks. I added the Bengal tiger decorations next. And at first I added this big tiger head, which looked really fun above the dome entrance. And I was really tempted to leave it, but it was specifically labeled Indian Tiger Arch. And it looked really cool, but it just didn't fit the theme of the area. So I took it down and put up this instead. Also, you might notice that I didn't do any decorations for the reptiles. And that's because my plan is to do them when I properly decorate the whole zoo, or at least this area of the zoo. And not while I'm just adding decorations to the habitats. Mainly because the reptile house is so big that I want it to match with whatever I do for the surrounding area so it doesn't stick out like a sore thumb. But after I finished that, a ton more peafowl had matured, which meant I could claim even more rewards. And then on a much sadder note, one of the grizzly bears passed away. So I set up the memorial on a nearby bench. And not long after that, a bison passed away. And honestly, I'm going to stop mentioning every animal that passes away because most of them did. Which is to be expected because it's nearly been 25 years and that's like the average life expectancy of most animals. I like stumbled over expectancy there, but I'm not doing another cake. But I did set up a memorial for each animal on a bench by the corresponding habitat. But in between all the animals dying, I caught these hooligans in the act of vandalizing this trash can. So I had them kicked out, but I did take note of why they were so angry. Which initially I didn't understand because they were right next to the drinks and food. But after thinking about it for a second, I remembered that if, if it's too busy, they won't even bother trying to get anything. So I deleted some of the buildings and made a new setup with a whole lot more shops. And it became rather busy, so I think the guests were pleased with the expansion. I added animal talks in front of each habitat to boost the education rating for the zoo. 
I also used this time to get the B-roll footage that I use when I don't know what else to show on screen. And by the time I was done with all of that, it was the start of year 25. And I didn't do much for this last year. However, most of the animal research was wrapping up, so that was nice. I spent most of this last year babysitting the flamingos and peafowls, adding memorials to benches, and cashing in all the rewards I earned from releasing animals. But by the time the year was almost finished, there wasn't any more litter on the ground or vandalized objects. And when I checked the guest needs tab, most of the people were green with a sparse amount of yellow and red mixed in. Overall, a great way to end this video and an even better way to start the next. That'll be it for this video. I hope you enjoyed watching. If you did enjoy watching, maybe consider subscribing. I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.